party. Now our first candidate to come this evening to speak. He is well known. He needs very little introduction. This is a man who has proven time and time again that he knows what it takes to win. He knows how to win. That man, he won big for the people of his constituency in 2015. And 2020, come 2020, June 5th, he's going to win even bigger for the people of his constituency. So people, comrades, help me welcome, help me welcome to the microphone. The unstoppable force in constituency number three, the Honorable Conrad Maynard. Yes, we ready now. Just because you do not own labor I wanna hear you shout it Will you stand for any low life little gangster Jeopardizing with bread and with butter If you hope, sing along with me I wanna hear you So let me show the world that we can overcome Our tribulations So let we show what togetherness achieve And we can make it as long as we believe That is by for election We vote in Labour strong And rock in the whole of tongue Unstoppable Saturday morning Road match They can't keep Labour They can't keep Labour down And when we reach world A lot of dust go a lot, a lot, a lot of dust go raise Here is small And we go red up the place A ready top, a ready top, a ready top Pull up Mr. DJ, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up Mr. DJ Unstoppable force The Sinkis Nevis Labour Party will prove To be an unstoppable force Come June 5th The day after tomorrow Comrades, citizens of St. Kitts and Nevis, it is always our pleasure to come to you in the form of our virtual public meetings. Uh, we are on the eve of a very important general election here in St. Kitts and Nevis. But it comes under the shadow of uncertainty. It comes under the shadow of injustice. It comes under the shadow of unfairness. Because we see a number of things happening around us that tell us very clearly that there are some in this country, in the government, who understand the writing that is on the wall. And so they are up and about doing everything they possibly could to take this election away from you, the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. But you see, sometimes these things are bigger than men. And God has a way of making sure that things go as they ought to. And I have faith that the electorate will see behind all of these tricks and games that the government, Timothy Harris, and his coalition are playing with the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. 
We have right now a situation in our electoral office where there are a number of things that are simply not right. Free and fair elections is critical to a democracy. And there are some flagrant misconduct that we are concerned about with respect to the electoral office. The electoral office is closed. People can inquire about their names on lists. Non-publication of polling stations. But yet we see that members of the government are advertising polling stations when when we call, we are told that they can't confirm that information. Non-publication of the voter register such that people are calling you all the time asking you where do i vote i'm not seeing the list how can you help we hear nothing about the protocols that need to be established for us to have an election under covid and then one of the more glaring ones is the fact that this government did not prepare itself to welcome overseas observers we understand that this evening, some of those should have landed. It was either two or three people. Now I want you to think about this for a moment. This is the government. They knew, or at least we suppose they knew, when they were going to call the elections. Yet, they call an election and did not make adequate arrangements for our elections to be properly observed, upholding the tradition of inviting international observers to give credibility to the electoral process. But is it really that, is it a level of incompetence? Or is it specifically designed such that there is really no international observers. Is it really by design that we have a state of emergency imposed when the health situation does not warrant it? Is it by design that you would invite the international observers only then to disinvite them and say that because of a 14-day quarantine which has been in place since March or April, you can't come any longer. People are concerned that something is amiss and the government is not doing anything to ease their concerns. But there is a way to fix it. On June 5th, you can walk to the polls with your mouth shut and vote them out. You can go to the polls and smile with them and vote them out. You can go to the polls receiving all the gifts and goodies that they give you for being a citizen of St. Kitts and Nevis and vote them out. Once they are out, they can't do anything. They can't victimize you anymore. They can't propel just one family anymore. They can't practice corruption anymore. The power of that vote. And that is why we ask you on June the 5th to march to your respective polling stations and look for the hand. And in constituency number one through to constituency number eight, vote for a next gen SKN candidate. Because it is only us here who have sat and thought about how we must take this country forward. So as I close, I end with a word on my constituency of constituency number three. I am so heartened to see the immense support that exists in constituency number three. I was speaking with a lady earlier this evening, and she said, Manna is a Pam. 
But me now study them. I voting for you. My daughter voting for you. My other daughter voting for you. Some of them, at, yesterday I was in another area. And I really can't even call any semblance of the name of this person. Because if the government only know who tell me this, they would be running full speed to go to this particular person. <laughs> Somebody asked me if Akila voted for me. I hear that too. But I went by this particular person. I can't even say man or woman. I only went to say hello. Not to pass, make sure I say hello. Because the last time we have a cordial relationship, the person said to me, you know where I stand, man, but we always good. But I, I mean nothing to, to, to us and our relationship. So I went to just say hello. And he or she <laughs> came out. I was just saying hello. They came out, came downstairs, came by the gate, shook my hand, and the person pulled me in and said, they think I'm with them. They didn't study me. Understand what I'm telling you. Don't say nothing. I met somebody else today who was rallying with them and said, of all the things we did for this concoction, they have neglected us. They referenced Sam and how Sam was used to get them in that place. And so that is why we feel so good in constituency number three that the seat of France will remain with labor. And we will be read once again when the count comes in. But we will not take that support for granted. We will work on the commitments that we have made from Shadwell in the north to points in the west, Fort Lands and Trafalgar in the south, Laguit, St. Johnson Village, Hainsmith Village, Russell Village, Buckley's site, Lime Keel, Buckley's Estate, Buckley's Extension, Bayview, Seaview, Ocean View, Amory Drive, Mattingly Heights, Dewars, Crescent Hill, Camps, Boyd's West Farm and Points. All that we've spoken about from preserving our history with the Shadwell Cotton House renovation, Buckley's Uprising Memorial, Sir Joseph Nathaniel France Museum, job opportunities to support in agriculture, greenhouses, fishing, the build out of infrastructure in Shadwell West, in Garvey's, in Boyd's View, East West Farm, and others, to the allocation of hundreds of house lots to the building of a, a minimum of 200 homes. Scholarships for our students, after school program, support for our cultural groups like masquerades and troops, building a cultural avenue on Wigley Avenue to showcase the extraordinary heritage of West Bastia. We have thought, sat with you, and come up with plans that will make a difference in your life and the lives of your children and family. And so on June the 5th, victory is coming. Don't know if you've heard the remix. Time for we to get the next gen. Time for we give the country a lift. I have a message for all of SKN. Victory is coming on June the 5th. Have a wonderful evening. I love you. God bless you. Vote Congress Maynard in three. Vote Labour in the country. Thank you. Stand up. Next gen. Boom. All right, turn. To Labour. Next gen. Labour. Next gen. Labour. To Labour.
You know, I, I, I hear them say a little thing because my roots in West Bastia and I, I have a, a passion for that constituency. Even though I'm up in number eight, but you can never forget your roots. And you hear them saying some people coming down there and they're passing a little sugar cake and so. But the people I'm sending them a clear message. West Bastia has always stood with Labour and West Bastia in 2020 will stand with Labour. Tell them make history somewhere else because it will not be in West Bastia on June 5th. Conwis has it locked. Conwis is ready. Conwis has shown that he can lead. So West Bastia on June 5th, show your support for the Honourable Conwis Maynard. You've heard from Conwis. Next Gen has some dynamic young candidates. We're traveling a little west. We're going west. We're going to a constituency where people say, this man feel he got it. He feel he, ha he has it all, that he has it wrapped up. But I know when we went on the little, the little drive through we had on Sunday, we saw a clear statement in constituency number five. And the people in number five were saying, Kenny, Kenny is on. And the other one, gone. Kenny, Kenny, let's hear it for constituency number five, our candidate, Mr. Kenneth David Douglas, better known as Kenny. Let's welcome Kenny. Oh, yeah, yo. People, you ready? From Brimstone Hill to La Valley. Singing this one song, all hail the Patriot Kenny. Yeah, long time we've been waiting for something to make us feel the vibe. This soldier in this red army makes Sunday Point come alive. Alive in number five, we never die, you know. Alive in number five, we the people cry, you know. Alive in number five, come let me do it together. Alive in five, we are me for both the police. For me is what for you, constituency number five. A pleasant good evening, one and all. A pleasant good evening to my good people of constituency number five. How many days? One day to go. One day to go, my people, before you truly, Kenny Douglas, will be declared the next parliamentary representative for constituency number five. One more day. As I said before, the people of constituency number five, Sean gone and Kenny is on. I want to say to you, the people of Sandy Point, I have said to you all of my plans that I will be doing for the good people of that constituency. I told you about my plans in sports. I told you how I will develop all the sporting facilities in Sandy Point. I told you that sportsmen will be receiving scholarships in Sandy Point. I told you that all the facilities in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis will be also developed. I told you about the indoor stadium. 
I told you about our football stadium in Warner Park. I told you about all the different fields around the Federation. I told you about our sports academy. Sports will be given a real lift. Sports will be given a real lift. And so I want the people to know that they should be looking forward for a big difference in sports in St. Kitts and Nevis. I told you about our footballers, our basketballers, our cricketers, all our sportsmen and our sportswomen. We will make sure that you are given incentives, incentives to make sure that you are motivated, that the interest is there. No longer will you just play and get injured and go back home. No longer. Kenny Douglas will ensure that you are well incentivized so that you, the people of the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, you can have something to motivate you, to push you onto the next level. I told you about education in Sandy Point. We and my people will be given again the one-to-one -one laptop program. I told you that never again will any government come here and lend you any um, laptops or any tablets. I told you that my classroom will be equipped with Wi-Fi, with internet. So while you are working with your teachers, you can do your investigation. You can do your research. I told you about our library in Sandy Point, that it will, it will come back. And our library will equip also with all sorts of computers. I told you about our community center. Our community center will be equipped with all sorts of computers also. And so in there, we will have all sorts of different programs for both young and old alike. I told you about Pump Bay and how Pump Bay will be developed once again. I told you that Pump Bay will be a tourist attraction once again. And our pier, our jetty will be rebuilt right there in Sandy Point. I told our fishermen to get ready because their fisheries complex will be back there. I told them that, they, that those with the small boats, you will have your ramp so that you don't have to go to Bass here to get your boat into the water. I told you about that. I told the farmers, the persons in agriculture, that right after COVID-19, we will make sure that agriculture farming is one of the number one priority for the government of St. Kitts and Nevis. I told you that manufacturing, financial services, tourism, these are going to be well developed, well improved. And so we will have betterment improvement and development in all aspects here in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. But ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk about um, our present representative because this man is not serious enough. He is not responsible enough. He is not committed enough. He is not strong enough to stand on the behalf of the people of constituency number five. Our present rep representative, he is a fry. He is a fry man, as a matter of fact. He is a soft man. He is not a hard man at all. He is not a hard man with a soul of compassion. He is not like that. He has not reached out to our people, especially our young people of Sandy Point. And that is why I am saying to the people of constituency number five, you have a man here with a plan. You have a man here with vision. You have a man here who has been working for you, the people of constituency number five, all his life. Do you want to give up all that? For a man, all he does is to party. He goes to all carnival all over the world. This is what you want? The people of constituency number five? He said that you are like it like that. You really, really like it like that? <laughs> well, I am saying to you, I don't like it like that. And the reason why I gave up everything 
so that I can stand in front of you and ask you the people to make me your leader. Make me your representative because we have no representative. We have no leader there in constituency number five. Don't allow Timothy Harris and Sean Richards and the rest of their misfits to turn their backs on you once again because that is exactly what they did. I told you last night that they rejected you and they neglected you. They ignored you. They forgot about you. And now they are coming in the last hour of rain. Remember he told people the last time that Sandy Pointers only can remember their last meal. And that is why he's coming now with all sorts of things now. Pushing money here, pushing money there, giving your vouchers here, fooling you about land. And you can't see how many square foot of land you have. You can't see the prices of the land. You can't see where the land is going to be. Fooling you, the people of Sandy Point. He said that his, his mantra is no gimmicks and no chicks. But you know what he's doing, my people of consistency number five? Is all gimmicks and all chicks he is using against you. He doesn't give about you. He doesn't care about you, the people. And that is why I am asking you this evening, give me a chance to serve you, the people of Sandy Point. Sean Richards and Timothy Harris, they turned their backs on the students overseas. We had to bawl and cry to them so that they can bring home the students from Jamaica. And when they finish, they are taking, they are taking responsibility for that. All the families and loved ones, they have turned their backs on you. They broke their promises to you, the people, you the students of St. Kitts and Nevis. They told you that they will lower all the interest rates of this and the students' loans up until now. They can't do that. We must reject them, neglect them, ignore them, and forget them on June 5th, 2020, this coming Friday. But I want to say something to you before I speak to the, the Spanish community. I want you to ask when Sean Richards sent his people around to ask you to vote for him, to put him in, to be lazy once again, not to represent you, to go to Bird Rock, to go to Martinley, and to go to Frigate Bay, ask him, what have you done? What have you done sub substantial for the people of Sandy Point? Congress always asks you, ask him to show me your trophy. You want me to vote for you again? Show me what you have done. But he can't show you anything because he's, he hasn't done anything substantial for you, the people of Sandy Point. But he's coming, bawling to you, asking you. I never see this man up and down in Sandy Point before. I told you already, he went MIA, missing in action. Now he's coming around because elections are around the corner. We have to done with this kind of foolishness. We don't want politicians like that anymore. I will be here for you. There is one more last question I want you to ask him when he comes around. Ask him what happened to the money for the new kids park that's supposed to be there at Cleverly Hill. Ask him that question. Ask him why he can't account for the money that was given for that new kids park that we have up there in Cleverly Hill. I want you to ask him that. I told you last night that the team, this unity grab and meant, they are full of persons who just love to misappropriate things. They misappropriate funds. And you heard the other day, they misappropriated people's vote the last elections. He in Sandy Point misappropriating all my plans that I have for you. And now I'm hearing that he can't account for, for monies now for the kids' park. Ask him all of that. If he wants to go back in there, he must explain to you what is really going on. But also, I want to speak briefly to all of the Spanish that we have in Sandy Point because we have a few of them. We have a few of them in constituency number one also. Many of them as a matter of fact. And so I just want to say something to them quickly. Number two, that's correct. 
constituency number two and constituency number three. Wherever you are, quiero decirles a ustedes que hay algo muy, muy importante que quiero comunicar a todos los cubanos, venezuelanos y dominicanos que están aquí en San Quirce Neves. No se dejen que engañar a ustedes una vez más. No se dejen que engañar por el actual gobierno. Ellos no los ayudan a ustedes. Son excusas siempre para que ustedes voten para ellos. No oyen nada de ellos. Son ladrones. Ellos solamente quieren engañarles a ustedes. Pero acuérdense, en 2016, les llevaron a ustedes a la cárcel. Les llevaron a todos a ustedes a la cárcel. Y algunos de ustedes también a Dominicana. Ustedes no tienen casas. Ustedes no tienen trabajo. Ustedes, ustedes no tienen casi nada. Y ahora están detrás de ustedes ahora para los votos. Yo quiero decirles a ustedes, dile a Sean Richards, dile a, ¿cómo se llama? Timothy Harris, dile a el Patchman, Patches, el número uno, y John L. Powell también, dile que ustedes van a votar para el mejor equipo, el mejor partido de San Quintín Nieves, ustedes van a votar por el partido rojo, el partido de labor. Yo quiero dejar eso con ustedes. So my people, I'm going to finish this evening by asking you the people, asking you my sportsmen and my sportswomen, you want to see better in sports, you want to see better in education, you want to see better in healthcare, you want to see better in manufacturing, you want to see better in sports, in tourism, in financial services, and nation building on a whole, vote for the next gen SKN Labour Dream Team. Vote for Kenny Douglas in constituency number five. Vote for the hand. Vote for the Labour Party. Thank you. Good night. And may God richly bless you. que nunca, porque todos necesitamos igualdad de derechos, ¿por qué pagar por servicios que deben ser otorgados y no comprados? Como ciudadanos de San Quis y Nevis, nosotros necesitamos mejor trato, no vendas tu derecho de tener un mejor futuro, recuerda que el partido de Leva te ofrece un futuro brillante, claro, defendiendo tus mejores intereses, pensando en ti y en tu familia. Este viernes 5 de junio, levántate a reclamar tus derechos y a votar por un futuro promisorio para tus seres amados. Es tiempo de que des un voto de conciencia. Este viernes 5 de junio, vota la bur, vota rojo. Levántate con leva. All right, all right, comrades. That little, uh, that little idea from Kenny make me want to do a little salsa, and so you know, it's sweet, ain't it? You like it? I love it. It's sweet tonight. <laughs> I got the Spanish look. <laughs> you know, when you hear Kenny talk, right, you feel it in your soul. Kenny is so genuine. Kenny does not make empty promises. People of Sandy Point, people of St. Kitts and Nevis, 
Kenny will not promise you a brand new boss to your high school and five years later, you and him see the ground turn up. Kenny will not promise you that he will be there for you, yet every minute he on a plane at some carnival. You know, Kenny says something, right? Kenny says, the people of Sandy Point are surprised that they're seeing the other man so much now. But Kenny, the solution is simple. Airport closed, he's not going to go. He can't catch no plane. So he ain't got a choice but to go down in the constituency. But on June 5th, people of Sandy Point send the message, send it loud and clear that it is too late. When we drove through in Sandy Point, we saw some people looking very happy in the red and they're happy. Then when you look at some of the faces, you saw sadness. You saw dejection. And you know, I am here to say to those people that come June 5th, we will have a new era. You will have a smile on your face on June 5th because you will finally elect the representative that will work for you in the person of Kenny Douglas. On June 5th, vote the hand, vote Kenny. Let's hear it for Kenny. No, we heard from Kenny. We're gonna just skip across a little bit. Can you wear that to your left? We're gonna skip to the left? Stick, skip to the right? The left? The man tell me he's the left. I'm going with the senior, he tell me the left. Left or right? We're skipping over the border just a little bit. And we're going to a constituency where the Labour Party will not be misappropriating anything. The Labour Party is bringing true leadership. The Labour Party is bringing a man whose experience will show in government. A man who will be committed to the people of constituency number four. Constituency number four. Your future is secure. Your future is sure. Because... <laughs> on June 5th we are asking you to elect the man that will come next let us welcome to the microphone from constituency number four Steve for sure number four let us welcome Steve Rensford on election day hear what I say on election day what I say, we vote in Steve, Steve, Steve. On election day, we vote in Steve, Steve, Steve. On election day, we jam in with Steve. We push in for Steve. We vote in for Steve. Steve, Steve, Steve. The one for we. Steve, Steve, Steve. The man for the community. Steve, Steve. I'm a leader in here. The one is this, say we vote in Steve anyway. The one is this, say we vote in Steve anyway. Um, good night to all the people listening to this virtual meeting via whatever medium. Once a good night to the constituents in the diaspora. And a special good night to the constituency of the constituents of constituency number four. We are one day to freedom, and freedom will come. But I want to, as I started my journey a year and a half ago on this political platform, I want to invoke a part of the scripture from Psalm 37. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like grass and wither as the green herb, and withering they are now. Their time has come, and as Comrade Diana said, there are some sad, long faces, because they know they are gone. 
As I said, I started this journey August 2018. And I've been on the, the road throughout the constituency. And I've been on this platform selling one message. And that message is to develop constituency number four and make it into the next economic hub of St. Kitts and Nevis. I've outlined my plans throughout my campaign. I spoke about economics, I spoke about sports, culture, education, innovation, creation, etc., etc. This is what I have in store for constituency number four. I've said that we will build a new model community. We will build a community where we have the amenities of storm drains, street lights, road networks, sidewalks to accommodate the physically challenged, portable water system, centralized sewage system, and green energy driven. That will be a model to be followed in the nation. It is time that we start to uplift our people and make them be respected and feel proud of their achievements. I speak about the Vultures High School being upgraded, to be air conditioned, to have a business lab, a technological lab, and a lab for the sciences. And I say that because I've said throughout my tenure that we have young, ambitious, and bright people in constituency number four. And we must bring the mechanisms necessary for them to be developed. And that will happen under my watch. I've also spoke about our cultural heritage. And in our cultural heritage, we intend to have a cultural village where we can develop the arts, the various activities that one will see during the Christmas time. And also, I've said that we have young people, about five years old, should be exposed to the arts, such as learning to play the violin, the flute, and so on. These are options to the, the, the life of crime. And these programs, I believe, will bring upliftment to our people. In addition to that, I spoke about having a no-tax zone in our area. A no-tax zone will bring jobs and opportunities for the young people of constituency number four and beyond constituency number four. Because we want that no-tax zone to bring opportunities for young people to learn, to develop their business skills and so on, and to earn a piece of the economic pie in the Federation. And this will indeed be an option for those persons. We have a representative who only cares about himself and his family. He has tried for more than 10 years in trying to get elected, and eventually he got elected. But all the promises that he has ever made, none has come to fruition. We cannot accept in this day and age, 2020, 2020 means you have perfect vision. And so our perfect vision has said that the guy is not good for himself, he's not good for the constituency, and he's not good for the country. The guy has, over his tenure, 2010, has been caught in a sting operation at the Marriott. He went further and misappropriated his client's funds in 2013, 2014, 2015. This is a pattern. But what do we say about this pattern? The pattern is one of theft but he has been protected by the government because you see all of them are corrupt and that is why they would always protect one another. Had it been a young guy from Old Road or Middle Island or Challengers or half a tree stealing two mangoes from somebody's tree or two coconuts 
and that person made a report to the police station, those young, that young guy would have been arrested. So why is it because somebody named Lindsay Fitzpatrick Grant and General Powell should be allowed to get off scotch-free by stealing $1.25 million? It's not good. It sends a wrong message to our young people in this federation. But it does not end there because, as I said last night, there are some persons who have come to me and given me credible stories about his misappropriation of their funds. But Lindsey Grant and General Powell will face a tribunal on June 8th. And so the people of constituency number four must show their morality. They must show that they have sense and don't elect Lindsey Grant in number four. And Master will tell you the same thing for number two. But I'm talking about number four because Lindsey Grant should not get one vote in number four. Because it is really a stain. The arrogance of Lindsey Grant walking through our constituency like he has done nothing. Because as he said, the money he stole from Tanzil is peanuts because he's he accustomed to money. He's accustomed to money, but yet he bounced two checks. And at the same time, try to sell the Pelican Mall parking lot. Right? And so these are the guys who are coming against credible persons, persons who are dedicated to their constituency. But I said to Lindsey Grant, as I asked him the question last night to explain to the constituents a number of um, accusations, I want to say to him tonight and to the constituents of number four, and I will read, I will read. U.S. Department of Justice, Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, Office of the Division Council, 201 Maple Street, Chelsea, MA 02150. Attorney General, claim number SKB ACV 2017 slash 0391. The FBI has reviewed the case involving Tanzania Tobin Tanzil and one Lindsay F.P. Grant and two General F.H. Powell. After a review of the claim by Mr. Tanzia, Tanzania Tanzil, a decision to launch an investigation will commence once the department has final finished reviewing the information from the case. We will be awaiting a ruling on the matter involving Mr. Grant and Mr. Powell by the courts on June 8, 2020 to proceed. Respectfully, Matthew M. Johnson, Assistant Chief Division Counsel, Federal Bureau of Investigation, 201 Maple Street, Chelsea, MA 02150. You know what this is saying? that Lindsey Grant can't ring out of this, neither he nor Powell. So don't waste your vote. Vote for Steve Rensford in number four. Vote for Marcella in number two, because the country has to move on. These guys are spoiled brats, and the FBI is not going to play with them. Let us get that clear. The FBI will not play with them. And let them refute this. Because the same way they went and searched for Jeffrey's naturalization papers and application, the same way we can search for their nonsense that they're doing it for our, to our country. They are being hunted by the FBI. And once this case is done on June 8th, FBI will proceed based on what they have said here. So let them know when they're going around chatting nonsense, let them deal with that. Because we are moving on and labor we're going to take this country. Because if by some fluke of nature they win, they're gone. If some, by some fluke of nature, because they're not win, but they lose, but <laughs> by the fluke. <laughs> so, but I'm saying, seriously, why can we trust this guy again? This is an indictment on their character. And we must not allow them to get away. 
You must not allow them to get away. The chat all kind of nonsense about common leader, and they can't find one thing. But this, this is evidence. Let them speak about that. Let them address it. Let Timothy Harris address that. Chatting a lot of nonsense. Let him address that. So I want to say to the people of number four, don't be swayed by the monies they are giving out. I was in vouchers, and the people told me some of them got $1,000 for um, vouchers to go and collect materials to build house and so on. They, they, they said they don't win, but why are they spending so much money? Because they know they are, they are on their last leg. Giving out $1,000 vouchers, and when they believe that the person is a strong labor, they pass the person's house. That is what they did today. And I was told that just a few hours ago. And so I want to say to you, you have a man who is dedicated to constituency number four. No one can refute that. None. Nada. I, Clyde Steve Rensford, is of number four. Is for number four. Will be for number four. Lives in number four. Has no way to go in number four. And any woman Steve Rensford ever had is from number four. So, number four, number four is my heart. And so I will develop number four. Number four. Number four. Any, anybody who want me, they have to come number four. Number four. Yeah. And so number four will move. Number four will be developed. And number four will come the next economic hub of the Federation of Sinkers and Nevis. And all the other constituencies will be hanging on by us. Because we will be the driver for... I, well, not the envy. I will be the helper. I will be the helper. Jobs will come to number four. Jobs will come to St. Kitts. Our people will be developed because we must invest in our young people to make sure they, have cre they can create and innovate things. They can make money just like anybody else in the world. We will do that. Labor will do that. Vote Labor. Vote the hand. Vote Steve Rensford. Thank you. Good night. And God bless you. Mr. Rensford, I would like to personally take this opportunity to endorse you, Mr. Steve Rensford, as the, the, the best candidate, the most equipped candidate, the most trustworthy candidate who would be on the ballot papers of number four in the June 5th, 2020 upcoming election. What I have seen in you and I have heard in you, I have seen trust. I have seen vision. I have seen and heard the passion of Steve Rensford. I have come to acknowledge and appreciate more now this morning. I, Clive Webster, takes this moment to endorse you as the next best person to go to government headquarters to champion the cause of the poor people of number four in creating and providing the well-needed and necessary opportunities, not as a handout, but as a handout. And so this morning, let it be known that in number four, it is Steve for sure. Rensford hot tonight, boy. Rensford hot. They tell me his name change. Is Steve Rensford no more? Is Steve Jobs? Because it's jobs, jobs, jobs. Plans that speak to empowerment and job creation, not only for number four, but for the entire country. I like how Rensford say it, you know. Rensford, I like you, you know, I like you. But man, come in number four, but I like you. I like when Rensford say, he said the guy is not good for himself. The constituency of the country. When's for the name but calling his name? You know, they had a lot of talk last election 2015 about FBI coming for this, FBI coming for that. But tell them, 
check and see who the FBI coming for 2020. And it's not anybody on the SKN Labour Party team. Check and see. They say, I heard the names and something struck me. Lindsay F. John L. F. I, I said they had something in common. Man, if it's fail or fraud or something else, but something got to be up. But number four, in number four, the decision is clear. You want a man of integrity. And on June 5th, on June 5th, you will go out and vote for the best candidate, our candidate, Mr. Steve Renz for the number four. So put your ex by the hand on election day and vote Steve for sure in number four. Let's hear it for Steve. No. Coming up, we have a man that, a young man, but all the girls, them love him. Every time you hear, you hear them talking. Oh, you got some young girls working in the office, right? Doctor, you don't feel no way. And when you hear them talking, they say, I like the smile. They like the smile. This man from constituency number seven is Labour's David. The man who will bring home the seat from the sitting prime minister. The man, you know, the man say, when, when the man here, when they hear Leon coming, they go in the next direction or they send the family them. He can't face up to Leon man to man. May know if it's because, um, yeah, we ain't going there. But he can't face up to Leon man to man, face to face. And on election day, on election day, not a I say. So let us welcome the man with the sweet smile, the man who will defeat the other one over there in constituency number seven. Let us welcome Leon Nata Nelson. Winning. Uh, hey. <laughs> Give thanks for life. Give thanks for life. Oh, chimile, chimile. Uh. Today my rise like the sunrise, my bright and my upright. No one can break my vibes. I may not care who I fight, I know I criticize, I'm on a higher height. So you can say what you want to and do what you want to, it's no concern to me. But come up my own vision, me depth on my own mission to rule my destiny. Oh, it's my day to do what the fuck I want to. It's my time, and I'll use it any way I want to. It's my Responsible for every action, it's all mine. My day, my time, my life. I beg you. Are you putting me in trouble? Comrades, comrades, that you're putting me in trouble tonight. You ready, comrades? Because we're ready for them. Let them know we're ready for them. Don't tell them so. That's how we feed them. Comrades, how you feeling? How you feeling, comrades? Boy, Diana put me in some trouble tonight. I wonder if you just smile on the camera, boy. Yeah. But I will sing. Well, 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 well. Number seven giving some problems. Well, 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 well. I got the man going like next year. <laughs> Comrades! Yeah! Oh, what a night! Oh, what a night! What a night, what a night! What a night, comrades! Oh, gosh, yeah. what a night! I, I feel, feel good, good when yeah. you're wrapped up in my arms. When you get the next gen smile, I feel good. Can we? 2025, me and you. Comrades, the labor train is back again tonight. 
The labor train is back again tonight because the next gen is here with you. We are unstoppable. We are unstoppable in all eight constituencies. We are unstoppable. You ask me now, make it well, how come? Everything when me a do a bad eye, yo. I've been through the fire and flames. Unstoppable. Who knows if we unstoppable? Unstoppable next gen SKN people. We are unstoppable. It is clear. The writing is on the wall. After June 5th, the next gen government will take over. Just as sure as the sun will rise. The handwriting is on the wall. Good night to the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. Good night to the listening and viewing audience. Good night to the wonderful people of constituency number seven. Good night, of course, to our citizens in the diaspora. Next gen is here with you tonight. One day before the next general elections, the next gen SKN is here with you tonight, and we are stronger than ever. We're coming in stronger than ever for you, the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. We're coming in stronger than ever. We're coming in stronger than ever. We're coming in stronger than ever. One day, only one day before, one day before the next election, one day before you exercise your franchise, one day before you decide. You decide the next government in St. Kitts and Nevis. Just one day. Just one day before you vote for progress. Before you vote for prosperity. Before you vote for innovation. For new ideas. For leadership. For accountability. For opportunities. For good governance. And of course, before you vote for the representation of your choice. All that and more you will receive when you vote for the next gen Labour Party. Comrades, people of St. Kitts and Nevis, constituents of number seven, one day before the elections of 2020, I come before you humble and proud. Humble because I know where I came from. Humble because I know the stories of the people of number seven. I know your struggles with housing. I know your struggles finding jobs. I know the difficulties of making ends meet, whether as individuals or as families. Humble because the communities and the people of number seven have embraced me and has positioned me to be their next candidate and parliamentary representative for the next gen St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party. And for that, for that I say a humbly thank you. Thank you to all the people of number seven. I know, I know and I am confident that you will make Leon Nathan Nelson your next parliamentary representative at the next general elections. That is also why I am proud. I am proud to stand before you, the people of number seven, and present a way forward, a roadmap to progress and prosperity progress and prosperity that would include plans for opportunities for every individual and every household in constituency number seven. Plans to bring safer communities. Plans to bring affordable houses. Plans to develop agriculture. Plans to develop sports and sporting facilities. Plans to secure water in the Phillips area, plans to, to, to create and secure a car racetrack in Tabernacle, plans to ensure a duty-free shopping area in the mansion area. Comrades and people of St. Kitts and Nevis, 
constituents of number seven. I am proud. I am deeply proud to be part of this St. Kitts Nevis Next Gen Labour Party team. The only team that can take this country forward. The only team that can take this country forward post COVID-19. You can trust us. You can trust us to deliver to you, the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. Your stories, we know of. Your issues, we will solve. You can trust this team to understand. Trust this team to bring help. Trust this team to bring opportunities to take this country forward. And so I said to you, the civil servants, the law enforcement, the small businesses, the musicians, the farmers, the lawyers, the doctors, the teachers, the students, the engineers, architects, all of you will get a chance to once more find your way in this country. Find your way to recover. Find your way to progress. Find your way to prosperity with the assistance, with the leadership of the next gen SKN government. Taking we country back. Taking we country back. We taking we country back. I say, stop too much. So, comrades, people of St. Kitts and Nevis, constituents of number seven, I stand before you humble and proud to be a part of this team, a part of this team that includes Jeffrey Hanley, our next gen candidate in East Bastia constituency number one. A proud man, a man who will represent East Bastia to the fullest. I am blessed to be a part of this team with Honorable Marcella Leibold of constituency number two. Our royal lady who have delivered to the people of East Bastia, Central Bastia, for all these years. I am blessed to be part of this team with Honorable Conrad Maynard, who have won big for you at the last election. And by God's grace and your support, he will continue to represent you and will be bigger for you at the next election. I am blessed to be part of this team, which is Excellency Steve Rensford, my good friend, the wise man, a humble man, a man who is from number four, and all his women is from number four. <laughs> and he will stay in number four because he is sure in number four. I am blessed to be part of this team with Kenny Kenneth Douglas who is most likely the one who cannot sing of all his brothers. But he is a community man, a well-loved man in number five. The people in number five will be alive when they elect Kenny Douglas to parliament. I'm also blessed to be a part of this team because we have in constituency number eight, the most caring doctor I have come across a caring and wonderful gentleman who have demonstrated to you, the people of St. and Nevis, who have demonstrated to his colleagues that in a time of need in this country, he will step forward and be a statesman, will be a leader. And you, the people of number eight, have only one choice to vote for posterity, progress, and a leader in Dr. Terence Joe. I am blessed to be a part of this team, to serve, sit, discuss, engage, and experience the leadership of the right honorable Dr. Denzel Douglas, whom have contributed tremendous efforts to this country, who have taken us to the highest heights in this country. I, I am so happy that he has decided to continue on this journey, to bring this team together, 
so that we can forward the agenda of this country, so we can forward the people of this country. And so for that, people of St. and Nevis, for that, my comrades, for that, my constituents of number seven, I stand before you humble and proud to be a part of this wonderful next gen team. So I say come out on June 5th. Come out on June 5th and vote. Vote for the betterment of you and your family. Vote for a better economy. Vote for a better lifestyle. Vote for people who understands and wants to do better for you, the people of St. and Nevis. And in number seven, vote for Leon Nata Nelson, who will put people over politics. I thank you. God bless you. Good night. Show me your voting finger. Raise up your voting finger. Show me your voting finger. Raise up the voting. All right. Be on my neighbor. Voting for neighbor. Gen, Labour, SKN, people over politics. That is the message from Leon Nata Nelson. Leon, what do you say? Winning is your middle name? Yeah. Leon, winning Nata Nelson. People over politics. Leon, you know, I, I follow in the Facebook here, right? Oh, and a lot of people changing the last name. I see all kind of not the last name popping up. I don't understand. Ladies, he not only look good, but he sound good. And he means well for the people of this country and for the people of constituency number seven. So on June 5th, vote the hand. Vote Leon Nathan Nelson in constituency number seven. I don't know about you, eh? but I feel it all late coming. I feel it. I feel it. Oh, you feel it? I feel it all late coming. You see it, you see it. No. We have been blessed in the St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party to have a wonderful woman on the team. A woman of substance. A woman of honor. A woman of courage. A woman who, despite what some may say, shows true leadership in constituency number two. In constituency number two, when you go to vote on June 5th, ask yourself one question. Who in number two can you really trust? Which one? I have never heard her name called in any misappropriation. I mean, I have never seen on an FBI list. What, that's why it is, why it runs for the list. I have never seen her name, but I'm seeing other people's name. So constituency number two, Labour, help me welcome this wonderful woman. This woman who has shown you time and time again that she has the interest of the people of constituency number two and this country at heart. She will deliver, she has delivered, and she will continue to deliver for you day after day, day in, day out. She truly cares. She's all in to win in Central Bastille. Let us welcome the Royal Lady, Central Honorable Marcel Alibad. Up, up, up. Take 
and friends of labor good night to you good night to all who are logged on tonight to this virtual meeting a special good evening to the good people of central bastia with one day to go we are feeling very excited excited about the victory we are about to have in central bastia and so we just can't wait for friday we can't wait for Friday to put an end to the political life of some people. And so tonight, I want to say to you that as we are one day away from election day, yet today we are in confusion. There's so much uncertainty People don't know where the polling stations are. People are confused because we are running an election from that electoral office and under this government where they're trying their best to see how they could confuse people and to ensure or try to ensure that labor does not win. But they're only fooling themselves. People are so fed up that in the motorcade on Sunday, you saw it? They tried to do something today, they don't even know what it was. But that motorcade on Sunday was a resounding statement. And the persons who were there said to me, this is a fed up motorcade. It was a fed up motorcade because the people are fed up of nepotism. They are fed up of victimization. They're fed up of misappropriation. And so when they go to the polls on Friday, it would be a fed up vote. On Friday when we go out, we'll put an end to all these things. In Central Bastia, I just want to emphasize three things. Jobs to bring back Central Bastia and the economy. We want to provide small businesses in the constituency with assistance to ensure that they can remain afloat and to help others to start their businesses. And so in our fiscal stimulus package, we have put aside a sum of $25 million for grants and small loans to small businesses. Real relief real relief to the ordinary people of Central Bastia and of St. Kitts and Nevis. Also, we noticed that housing a real problem, a big problem. And so we will be providing 200 houses in Central Bastia over the next five years. 200 houses. And I want to say to the young people that 40% of those houses will be set aside just for you. 40% set aside for the people under the age of 35. 40% of those houses. I want to say to the single mothers, because everywhere I go, I get single mothers saying to me, I need my own home. Single fathers too, single fathers as well. Single parents, single parents, but mainly the single mothers because most of the times the children live with the mothers. And so I've been saying to them because many of them are saying to me and the single fathers too, what has happened to that program that labor had to build homes for people of our income bracket. For the last five years, they've been going over to NHC and they've been getting the royal one round. Every minute, go to the bank, 
go to the bank, go to the bank, when they know that these people would not meet the standards at the bank. They know that for a fact. But yet, they keep sending them to the bank because they know they are not prepared to help them. We said to you, when you go to the polls on Friday, vote for yourselves. Vote for your houses because we will bring back that program where we built for you and you pay into NHC because we recognize that is not everyone who will be able to meet the standards at the bank. But if we follow that standard, many people, many ordinary people will never be able to own their own homes. And that cannot be right. And so we will bring back that program. And the third thing I want to say about what we have for Central Bastia, we will revive sports in Central Bastia. In the last five years, sports have been declining and declining and declining in Central Bastia. And as a sports person, I cannot sit by and allow that to happen. And so we will do whatever it takes to revive sports in Central Bastia. We will ensure that we revive the basketball team, Trotters out of McKnight, and put together, put together a Central Bastia basketball tournament to keep the young men active in a very positive way. We'll revive netball in the country and in Central Bastia. Right now, our young women, they have really nothing to look forward to in terms of netball. Netball is supposed to be the number one female sport. Under Sean Richards, it's just non-existent. Sports have declined rapidly under him. I can't wait for Kenny to be on because he'll be on for the sports as well. And so we will revive netball as well and also in the constituency. It was very painful for me to go to the gardens and look at the tennis court down there because I resurfaced that court. Bring it right back. Even guests from OTI came there to play tennis. Over the last five years, it has deteriorated rapidly. No maintenance, nothing done to it. And so right now, it needs resurfacing again and bringing back again. But as I say, I am here to revive sports in Central Bastia. And so we'll resurface the basketball courts at Dorset Park and at McKnight and ensure that our sporting people have proper facilities in Central Bastia because that would help our young people to become active in, ve in very positive ways. And so I said to you, come Friday, the choice is very simple. It's a simple choice on Friday. The chair lady alluded to one of them. Politics is about trust. You have to trust someone who you're voting for. As a matter of fact, when you're in government, you are actually the trustee for the people. Some people don't understand that. They think they're in there to get everything for themselves and their families. But they are the trustees for the people. But if you already have people who are misappropriating people's funds and they reach in yet, could you imagine what would happen? So the choice is very clear. And also, I grew up in a needy family. We had to struggle. We made our way mainly to education. But we had to struggle like so many families. And so I understand the struggle. I understand the struggle. Unlike my opponent who grew up privileged. Privileged. So he doesn't understand the struggle. And they believe that you can throw money at every problem. Just throw money at it. We will ensure that the young people of Central Bastia are given opportunities for business, opportunities for business, opportunities for education. 
we are in contact with some folks in Germany who have said to us that they have secured scholarships for the people of Central Bastille to do education, to study at a degree level in Germany and also at a skills level. So we have people going there to hone their skills. Also, right now, they're in touch with football teams there so that we can have a link between the German football teams and Garden Heart Spurs and any other teams, not only in Central Bastia, but in the other areas as well. We won't be selfish with it. But that is what we are pursuing for young people so that they can elevate themselves and be better positioned to look after themselves and their families. We want to take them from one level to the next. We want them to be able to make much more money than they're making now. And so we say to them, bring your projects to us. Put your projects together and we will partner with you to ensure that your projects are successful and that you will be able to make more money than you're making at the current moment. So the choice is very clear. The choice is very clear. Come Friday, 5th June, in Central Bastia, vote for Marcella Leibard. Vote for the hand. Put your X in the box next to the hand. And I want to thank all those first-time voters, the two who walked with me on nomination day. The two who nominated me and nominated their two first-time voters. And the number of them who've called me throughout the last couple of weeks to say, I am with you. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Central Bastille. Thank you for your support. And thank you for the support you will give on Friday as we win that seat and take that seat for labor. Victory is ours in Central Bastille. And nothing, nothing could stop us from winning that seat on Friday. And so I said to you, I said to you, vote next gen. Vote next gen in every constituency because you would see the fiscal stimulus package that we're putting out there because next gen cares. Next gen cares. And as we go around and we see the suffering and hear all the stories about those persons who have lost their jobs up to today, I spoke to no less than about five persons who were saying to me, I lost my job since March and up to today I haven't received one cent from the stimulus package. Nothing. And I'm saying to those people, vote next gen on Friday. Vote for the hand on Friday. Because we have a stimulus package which says that every household will get a credit note to the value of $3,000. A credit note to the value of $3,000 for every household all the households in Central Bastia and in St. Kitts and Nevis, that you can pay your electricity bill, your water bill, your rents, your mortgages to NHC and any other government obligation. You have up to $3,000 to do those things. You know why we're doing that? Because we know that even if you get the $1,000, you won't be able to pay your debts and feed your children at the same time, yourself and your children. So if you have the $3,000 credit note, then you can use that to pay your electricity bills, to pay your water bills, to pay your rents and mortgages to NHC and other government obligations so that you will have the money to buy food for yourselves and your children because next gen cares. And that's just only one part of the stimulus package because all public servants, all public servants, no matter where you walk, parks and beaches, our government headquarters, 
no matter where you work, you would get 15% increase in pay come the end of June. That will be backdated to January 2020. Next Gen Cares. And that's the same thing that would happen for our pensioners. All pensioners will get 15% increase in their pensions as well. We understand the financial difficulties that many people are going through at this time. And we say, as next gen, we have to bring real relief. Real relief to the people of Central Bastia and to the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. And so I say, as I leave, on Friday, the choice is very clear in Central Bastia. The choice is very clear throughout St. Kitts. Vote next gen. Vote next gen. Bring relief to yourselves and your families. Vote next gen. Vote the people you can trust. Vote the people you can trust. And you can see the desperation setting in in Central. Every night, people are paid to take down my boards. What is that? Every night, people are being paid to take down my boards. As I said, I never see boards in the line yet. Never see them lining up to vote. So let them take down all the boards they want. And I will take all the people in the line on Friday to vote for us as we march solidly towards victory come Friday, June the 5th. Thank you. Good night. Enjoy the rest of the meeting and enjoy the rest of your evening. Just as sure as the sun will rise, this government must fall. The handwriting is on the wall. Show me your voting finger. Raise up your voting finger. Show me your voting finger. Raise up the voting. All right. Me and my neighbor. Voting for labor. Voting for labor. Central Bastille, the choice is clear. Vote for a woman who shows true leadership, true compassion. You know, Marcella was talking about the sports thing and reviving the sports. And you know, something came to mind. Some of them never touch a ball yet. They, oh, Kenny, what you said they never kick a line yet. And you see them posing. A lot of them are posing. Yeah? Them just a pose. I see a picture. With the, 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 the gentleman running against Marcella, I see them in a picture, a pose. And you could see he not fit in. He not fit in. He just a poser. Marcella is a doer, not a poser. They, them a poser's ambassador. Them a poser's liar. But tell them, Central Bastia, tell them, they will not pose as your elected representative. Because on June 5th, on June 5th, you're going to make that decision and you're going to vote the hand and you're going to vote back Marcella Leibard. Marcella Leibard will be going back to Parliament after June 5th. Labour all the way in Central Bastille. It's about leadership. It's about trust. That is the decision you have to make on Friday. All right. And we're moving on. We're moving on nicely. This meeting's sweet. I like it. I really like it tonight. Okay. Now, boy, and we ain't gonna clap in machine and all them load of things to make no load of noise. This is genuine. Oh, man, about the boy views part, but I hear so. Anyway, let's continue. Let's continue. I'm bringing next a young man who grew up in the labor movement from the time he could walk he has been following the labor movement he has been active in the labor party now i had a young man visit our constituency office today so i asked him where are you from he said i'm from bird rock so i said um you know the candidate in his bastier 
is Comrade Jeffrey Hanley. Have you decided how, will you, how you will vote on election day? And can I ask you to give Dr. Hanley your support? He looked at me and he said, Miss, that is not even a question. I said, but why? And he started going through how Jeffrey has helped him from the time he was a little boy. He spoke about the camps that Jeffrey used to have. He spoke about scouts. He spoke about many different things that Jeffrey has, in, has been involved in and how Jeffrey's involvement helped to shape his life and determine his future. East Bastyr, the Labour Party is bringing to you a candidate that is real, a candidate that is genuine, a candidate that truly cares for East Bastyr. Not a candidate who looking for a pension or looking for, just looking for a job. Or not somebody who looking for the perks, but who tongue dirty like I don't know what. You have a competent representative. Labor is bringing you a competent representative. A real representative. He is with you. He is with you all the way. So help me welcome from East Bastille. The man himself, Comrade Jeffrey Hanley. Jeffrey Hanley, he cares no way That is why on election day we go take the victory On election day, yeah We go chop in the heads and put in the box someday, yeah We vote in Jeffrey, we don't care what nobody say, yeah. He's a man for the job, the one who really cares about way, well. yeah. Jeffrey Hanley number one Election day, I am with you And every day, I am with you Thank you very much, comrade Diana. Comrades, one day left before the general elections. And you'd realize that the voice is not as I would like it. But I will make it to the end. East Bastia, I say a pleasant good evening to each and every one of you. All those listening on the social media, I greet you on the eve of victory. To my campaign team, I say thank you for your overwhelming love, support, and hard work. It was tonight when I walked in the office, like all the other nights, and when I saw you guys working in your various spaces to ensure that a victory will be brought to the people of East Bastia. You guys almost made me cry. Well organized. And I say thank you. Thank you, East Bastia. I would have been speaking to you for almost two years. 
And tonight I remind you that I am the same humble, honest Jeffrey Hanley. And when you go to the polls on Friday, I know you will do the right thing by voting for Jeffrey. I am with you, East Bastille. And today, I had a joke of my life. Walking through a particular area in the constituency, doing my checks for polling day, I saw an individual looking like he might have been campaigning. I joined the area only to discover somebody working on behalf of the representative. He no longer feel that he should be out there. But the sad thing, when the young men were asking for the representative and his agent called him on his phone, they had him on speaker and he told them, I am not coming anywhere because no matter what you do for those people, they are not going to change. Is that a representative you will want to continue to represent East Bastia? No, no. I say no, no. No, no. And we are going to put a stop to it on Friday. I would have shared my entire life with you, my good people. You know my passion. You know my heart. I would have shared my plans to develop the constituency into a dynamic and digital constituency. And on the eve of the general elections, I still give you that assurance that I will deliver. The community center will once again be equipped with our computer lab so that our young children and the seniors can be in tune with the technology. I did it when I managed the PEP program and since the change of this government the 20 plus computers were removed from the community center. I would have told you over and over how I love the elderly. And I would have given you the assurance that the community center will be used as an elderly deck here, where our elderly can be relaxing, having an enjoyable time, and at the same time, sharing with our young children or students in the constituency. I will do that for you, my people. In 1998, when I was the president of the Leo Club, I organized 
a kiddies park in Ponds Extension. Simba's Park, we had called it. And when the representative was planning to run, he went and he adopted that same space. And up to now, it's only grass there in that spot. It took me a matter of months in 1998 to get all the equipment in the park. How is it? It's taken the minister over five years to do that. He doesn't care about the people. In addition to the elderly, care what we are going to be offering. I would have been telling you, I visit their homes. I take their pressure and their blood sugar. And under my watch in the constituency, we will have an increase in home care officers and a voluntary group of young people who will be able to assist in taking care of our elderly. Many of them would have served our community well. And comrades of East Bastia, many job opportunities will come your way. You just heard it from our deputy leader speaking about our post-COVID stimulus package. Nothing can beat that, my people. Young people, you will be given the opportunities to earn your own businesses as we will have the Ministry of Entrepreneurship that will guide you to your dreams. We are committed to that, my dear people. With our stimulus package, the economy will bounce back. We have the experience and I know that our leader, our soon to be elected prime minister, he will deliver again for the people of St. Kitts and Nevis and the business community. My dear people, constituency number one, you will not be left out in our affordable housing program. I think we will have the most creative housing program in the constituency and throughout. I would have been discussing and sharing with my colleagues. They must be different. Some will come with small business spaces in the same complex. So those of you who are doing your little salon, your barber shop, or you might want to open a little laundry or ironing service in our new housing program, those will be included and many will happen in constituency number one. And finally, on housing. I will deliver to the people of East Street their long dream of owning the property and modernizing the area. The representative went 
to the length and breadth of the country talking about he will do it. Five years have expired and nada, nada, nothing. A waste of time. And you know, I left a legacy in education. They cannot touch me when it comes to education and education leadership. Every one of them, including the minister, always highlighted my hard work, my vision, and my innovations. And so it is tonight, the Federation can look forward to a transformed education system. One that will make education more friendly. Teachers will be proud of being a part of this noble profession. I will fight for my teachers to ensure that the right packages are put in place for them because I know many have been working hard. So teachers, you can depend on me to fight. I feel your pain because I have been there. We will work together to ensure that our education system becomes the envy in the region. We have made commitments that there will be tuition freeze at the CFB college. $25,000 study grants will be made available to our young people and not so young. I give you the assurance that we will be fighting to increase our scholarships for our people. And of course, those persons living with disabilities, you will not be left out because I will ensure that some of you get to the United States to be in universities and you will come back to contribute to St. Kitts and Nevis. I started working with you in the PEP program when we instituted the disability PEP group. Giving all of you the opportunities to learn a skill so that you can feel a part of society. I will continue to fight for you as I did assisted in getting the bus for you guys. I did that and I wasn't in government. And tonight I give you the assurance that no longer will Disabled society be paying to maintain that bus that take around those persons living with disabilities. That will become the responsibility of a caring labor government. I give you that assurance. Just as how many of you will get the opportunity to get your own homes as well. So my dear people, it's on the eve of June 5th. I say to you, when you go to the polls, let your conscience be your guide. Yes. Don't listen to what they are saying. They cannot and they will not know who you vote for. So I say to you, my dear people, in constituency number two, I ask you to bring it home 
with Marcelo Leibold. Bring it home in constituency number three with Conway's Maynard. Bring it home in constituency number four with Rensford. In number five, come on, Sandy Point, bring it home with Kenny Douglas. In number six, bring it home as usual. In number seven, bring it home with Leon Nato Nelson. In number eight, we have our Kieran Doctor. I say, bring it home. And when Dr. Joe passed Connery and entering into East Bastia, I give you the assurance, I will bring it home on June 5th for the people of East Bastia. Long live the St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party. East Bastia, I love you and I'm excited to start working for you on Monday. God bless you. See you tomorrow. See you on Friday. And then on Saturday, free at last. Sir. Free at last. Sir. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Sir. Nothing that try can stop the victory. I can't wait, I can't wait, I can't wait for morning. Yo, yo. Trouble in tongue, tongue. Yo. Play anyway, here we come, the biggest shock with the load system. Happy jumping on through the tongue. Truck man, blow your horn. coming to clear there's no question in his boss here this time around dr jeffrey has it locked and ready east bastia will be there on saturday jumping up in the victory on sat on friday go on out and vote the hand vote dr jeffrey hanley in east bastia we winding down we winding down but you know Sometimes they got to save the good things and so everything nice here, but I've been a little biased here. Because the next candidate that is coming to speak to you is a candidate that I have had the pleasure of working very closely with over the last, how much is it? Seven, eight years? Over the last eight years or so. He's a gentleman that is genuine, he's caring, he's honest, he's a man of integrity, he's a man that cares. In constituency number eight, the choice is clear. In constituency number eight, our conscience will be our guide. In constituency number eight, we will continue to vote labor. You know, this morning, around after six, I hear this sound on my road. I was like, what is that? That sounds very strange. I haven't heard that. Like, it's been a while. It's been quite a while. In fact, I think it was five years. When I look out, I see a car coming down the road, and I, I hear in the voice of this man that's supposed to be my representative. I could call him name because... He number eight and I number eight. I hear in the voice of Eugene Hamilton. So I said, let me peep to see what's going on. And I thought I can finally see the man on my road in five, after five years. But guess what? Is a recording coming down the road? Is a recording? And guess what? He coming down the road. If you know where I live, I live Gillard's. Gillard's housing. And I hear the man talking about housing. Then I hear the man saying something about um, in Cunningham and in 
um, waterworks. And in summary, I'm like, they're confused. Even the people who are bringing him message confused. Because here they were in St. Peter's, and they were not bringing any plans for the people of St. Peter's. Because the man clearly has no plan. He has no conscience. He has no vision. And on the Friday, the 5th of June, Constituency 8 will send a clear message. Hamilton, go back wherever you was. You weren't there for the last five years. You were not there. So on June 5th, we will not be there for you because we will be there for a true representative. We will be there for a good, caring doctor. We will be there in number eight for Dr. Terence Drew. Help me welcome Dr. Drew. I see a lot of Rasta men in here tonight. Drop something for them now. <laughs> you are got tired to see me face. Can't get me out of the race. That's how we do it. Oh, man, you said I'm in your place. And then you drop a yard. I'll make you drop a yard. That's right, Ronnie. Good night, good night to the good people of St. Kitts and Nevis. And good night to the people of constituency number eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is your candidate, Dr. Terence Drew. Ronnie, this is an inclusive party. That's a good tune for the rest of the men. So I just want to say to all the people of constituency number eight from Bearfords, St. Peter's proper, Nismas, Kitsodat, Connery, Half Moon, Keys, Canada, Kayon, and Otley's. I want to say a special good night to all of you. Over the last five years or more, I have been with the people of constituency number eight. I said to the people that we will never, ever leave your side. And, you and I have not. I have represented you, the people of number eight. Because I think that being a representative is a full-time job. It is not a part-time job. I just show up just before an election. And that is exactly what the people of number eight would have gotten from Eugene Hamilton. Just show up just before an election. And so I want the people of number eight to just make that evaluation. Imagine in your mind how you can draw a picture, Dr. Drew on one side and Hamilton on the other side. And the garbage bin in the middle. And, the in the middle. and choose one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For it is very important that the people of number eight make a decision of conscience. I passed to number eight even today I was in Kayon. And you would not believe that the most People who are trying to reach me are people who are considered to be unity supporters. Imagine that. I am not in government. I have nothing special to offer in terms of tangible things. I can't give house. I can't give land. But the people are still seeking me out. People who Eugene Hamilton thinks are right near next to him. 
are searching me out. And they're searching me out because they want good representation. They want to know what Dr. Drew will deliver for them in constituency number eight. And I want to say to them tonight that we have a comprehensive plan for the constituency. For 16 things were promised to you, the people of number eight. And just maybe one out of 16 would have been delivered. And I'm still investigating it. Can you imagine that? 16 things and less than one delivered to the people of constituency number eight by any measure that is a dismal failure and that is why when i go to when i went to Atlas today when i went to kayon st peter's connery keys all over kitsodat nismas the people are saying that we were failed by eugene hamilton and so now they're looking for better they want real representation representation that will help them to lift themselves up and in number eight here are some of the things that we will do for you the people and coming from saint peter's we will re-establish the farms up in barefords and green hill and develop what you call an agro-tourism sector or area there in that area we will make sure that the farmers have water one of the farmers said to me, Dr. Drew, just because of the crisis, they are now telling us to come for seeds and seedlings. But one of the questions I want to ask them, where will we plant? We are planting in a desert because they don't have any water. And that's so I'm saying to the farmers tonight that we will make sure that your farms have water and that you become a part of the main stream economy. And not just an afterthought because a crisis would have hit St. Kitts and Nevis. And all of a sudden, everyone realizes how important agriculture is. And that is why we are going to invest in agriculture. For the men and women who lost their livestock, their cattle, their sheep, their goats, their animals in general. We will compensate you so that you can start rearing those animals again and getting ready to supply our people i visited some young men in connery totally disappointed with the lack of representation that they have gotten from eugene hamilton in saint peter's we will modernize the health center and create a medical complex right up there so that the health center can serve the people for extended hours and have a pharmacy right there so when the doctor writes a prescription the patient can collect it and unlike what is happening now where there is hardly any medication in the pharmacies your medication will be there waiting for you and in the case where the doctor wants a, sp a specific type of medication and it's not available we will make sure that we can get it for you that is what we'll do in st peter's We'll fix up the sporting complex right up there in St. Peter's. Expand our football league, our basketball league, have netball leagues and cricket leagues, leagues that are going all on ready. We just have to add to them right there in St. Peter's. We will develop the economic aspect of the development of St. Peter's right next to the community center in that environ so that the hairdressers can have a place, so that the barbers can have a place, so that those who want to ply their trade can have a place where they can play. Can you imagine St. Peter's is now the largest area outside of Bastia? And you can't find a barber in St. Peter's on a good day. You can't find a place to eat sometimes on a good night. And therefore we have to expand our small businesses. And that is why I said to the people of St. Peter's, we will bring into play a small business ministry so that you can have that support to start your business we'll also make sure that we build roads in st peter's five years and more and eugene hamilton has not built one road in st peter's i went up to st peter's walking up in the gondo area and you see the dirt roads up there you go to needs must you see the dirt roads there kayon they're there keys they're there 
I am not suggesting that everything can be done at the same time. But when you see large areas in St. Peter's and not one road over five years, that is a dismal performance. And that representative does not deserve to be elected again. That is what you call a sleeping representative. And so we're going to develop St. Peter's. Sofa Stone will be developed into what I call a tourist attraction site. One of the most beautiful views in St. Kitts Nevis must become available to our people and those who visit us. That will put St. Peter's on the map so that people can have tracks going up there, trails going up there, can drive up there. And up there we want people to start small businesses of selling and so forth and trading and having things that people can buy when they reach the top of Sofa Stone. We will develop it. We'll also make sure that we create a monument in celebration of the actors and the art of actoring that is only practiced in St. Peter's and St. Kitts and Nevis and I show throughout the OECS. It is about time we display that culture that is indigenous to the St. Peter's area. So we are going to convert St. Peter's into what I've said all the time, make it the great state that it, due, that, is, that it should be at this point in time. We are saying to the people of St. Peter's that number eight is going to depend on you. You will dictate who become the representative. But we will not only develop St. Peter's, we want to develop even Kitsodat and give you your roads in Kitsodat. No roads in kids so that they're in terrible condition and we will take care of that. When you go to Nismas, there are no roads hardly any development. You need some development in Nismas also. When you go over to Half Moon, well, that place has been totally neglected. Totally neglected. And we are saying to the people of Half Moon that Eugene Hamilton and Unity have not delivered anything that they would have promised you. And therefore, we are asking you to reject him on election day and vote for Dr. Drew. All over, when you go over to Connery, it is a big constituency. When you go to Connery, you recognize that there's hardly any development. Connery is an area that stuck with Eugene Hamilton to thick and thin. And now he has become the representative. They are saying to me that he passes them with his glass up and on the phone as if they don't exist. That is what they're saying to me, total neglect. Up to now, he cannot finish the houses in Connery. And he's the Minister of Housing. Cannot build a health center in Connery. And he's the Minister of Health. Cannot construct the greenhouses for the folks who practice agriculture in Connery. And he's the Minister of Agriculture. No help for the fishers in Connery. And he's the Minister of Agriculture as well. And so I'm saying to the people of Connery, that you stood with Eugene Hamilton, but he has not stand with you, and therefore, you must reject him. And if we go over into Keys, I was in Keys, and as I walked down the road, people said, Dr. Judy, these are dirt roads. Not one road built in Keys. No housing development in Keys. His big achievement in Keys is a basketball ring. And it's me who first put up the basketball ring. And to save face, he went and took them down and put up his, but that is okay. And look at the state of the health at the community center in Keys. Totally neglected, leaking. It's like a river running in the, in the building when rain comes. And it's a small community center, nothing for the people of Keys. As one of the persons tell me, you mean Lord, man, he couldn't do one thing in Keys and make us feel good? Abandon the sporting complex. Nothing at all for the people of Keys. And that is why the people of Keys will reject him. And when you go to Kayon, what the people were expecting in Kayon, he did not deliver. He said he would turn the basketball court into an indoor court. We know he did not deliver that. He did not even come close. Because when the people asked for the fencing to be done in blocks, Eugene Hamilton put um, fencing wire. Totally, total failure when it comes to that. They ask him to develop the football field and put in the bleachers and the stands. He sent over a bako a week and a half ago to act like he's doing something. Nothing after five years trying to deceive the people. He said he will build a center of excellence in Kayon. 
Name after Mr. Wharton. There is no excellence, no center, and nothing named after Mr. Wharton. God bless his soul. Say so he would look after the farming. And when you go up into Green Hill, they can't even get water. Totally, totally not delivering what he said. Not one thing he said he would deliver to Kayon, he did. Not one. He promised them five things, and not one out of five was delivered. Total, total failure. And when you go to Atlas and Little Italy, well, you can say those were totally neglected and totally forgotten. I went to Little Italy today, and if you see the state of Little Italy, you'll be shocked to know that the representative is in government and has not done anything for the people of Little Italy. But I want to say to the people that we'll make sure that you are looked after. We have a comprehensive plan to look after the whole constituency with the help of all the people. And so I said to the people tonight that the question you have to answer on Friday is a serious question. Very serious question. You will determine if you choose somebody who will work on your behalf, who will fight hard for the constituency, fight hard for you, fight hard for your families, or fight hard for your country. And do not take that decision lightly because that decision determines a lot of things. It determines whether you go to study or not. It determines whether you get a house or not. It determines whether you'll have the opportunity to start a small business or not. It will determine whether you can get a job or not. And these are life-changing decisions in anyone's life. And that is why I'm saying to the people of constituency number eight, take that decision seriously. And to wrap it up, I want to say to the young men that the St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party cares about you. We want to create for you real opportunities. I have met with you, a lot of the young men, and you have said to me that the money from the peace thing don't drop a lot, long time. They don't give you any pay slip. You can't apply for a visa. You can't apply for anything because there is no official anything when it comes to that. That is just a scheme to get you to vote for them in the elections. And the sad thing about it, they have a general here overlooking that program who has the worst record of destruction of human life in the Caribbean. That general is not even allowed to work in Jamaica anymore for the destruction of life that he caused there. Yet he's here working on that initiative. Have all of your names. And why do you think that is so? That is not accident. That is by design. And I'm saying to the young men, you have to think and think wisely. Understand that this scheme is not really to help you to uplift yourself. Because you yourself decided long ago that you wanted to end the violence. You met at Marriott. But the government took you and carried you to Nevis and forced this money thing on it. Having the population thinking that you're only quiet because you want money. But truth be told, you made the first step. Stick to those principles. The St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party has a comprehensive plan for you and all the other young people. We want to see you get into business. We want to see you further your studies. We want to see you become technicians. Whatever your dream is, we want to help you to further it. I saw a clip with a young man making it. And he had on one side a bag of weed and some money. And on the other side, he had a lawnmower, a weed eater, and a face shield. And he said, the choice is clear. He said, why are you going to take the money and the little bit of weed now that you need to give me? Or are I going to go over here and take the weed eater and the lawnmower and the face shield and go out and form my own business so I can be making money all the time? The young men know what they're saying. They are thinking. And they are saying that no one dollar today and no two dollars tomorrow just before an election can make me think that these people really care about me. And I'm asking the young men to think clearly. Think about the future. Think about long term. Len Harris is trying to buy this election. He comes around with money in his pocket. 
Somebody say ice cream, sweetie, lollipop. He can call it sugar cake. A quick fix to give you a quick thing so that they can regain power. And while you get pittance, they will be getting millions upon millions upon millions. Len Harris is running the development bank like a shop, like a Ponzi scheme, like his own personal bank opening the bank on holidays and on Sundays and doing all sorts of things in the bank that people don't know. And that is why I'm saying to the young men, think wisely. Do not be used by Len Harris. Do not be used by Timothy Harris. And that general who is here is not here by accident. You have a choice on the 5th of June to do something about it. It's not something violent because we don't believe in violence. But you can go into the box and in a secret way make a small X in that box that is next to the hand and reject Timothy Harris, reject Len Harris, and reject the general. And choose the St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party, which is the party that will help you to build your lives and create a better future. And that is what we are asking the young men to think about when they go to vote. And so I want to wrap it up by saying to all of our people that the St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party is in the business of helping people to pursue their dreams, to build themselves, build their communities, build the country, because after all, it is all about you, the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. Thank you. Good night. They brought people here to eliminate the problem. There was a plan to eliminate the problems. The, 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 the St. Lucia, Lucia solution. Mm -hmm. We have extrajudicial killings. That was part of the plan. But when they see who was in the crossfire and who was in the firing line, they ball out, Lord, no, 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 let me try something different. The minister's son, tie up, and, um, and, and um, they think that the, the, the son was, was, was part of what was going to be eliminated. And therefore, they start to cry out. Stand up! Next gen. Boom! All right, turn. To play about next gen. To play about next gen. To play about Next year, next year, ever. Boom! We stronger than ever. Out here, we come in here stronger than ever. Constituency eight, the choice is clear. They say the man in constituency eight, he ain't like people. Hey, Mister Sir, is big like Sir Sir. They say he only in it for a pension. Big like Sir Sir, hey, me. The man built one house, and that was for his sister, and she rented it. And people well want houses in constituency number eight. So when they come to you in constituency number eight and ask you who you're voting for, tell them, don't ask me who I'm voting for. Ask me who I'm not voting for. I'm not voting for Eugene Hamilton. But guess what? I vote in. So on election day, in number eight, put your ex by the hand, put your ex for Dr. Terence Drew and the Senkis Nevis Labour Party on June 5th. We thank you all for sticking with us. And we're coming up. We have a main event coming up. No. You, you know, we went on the little drive through the island. It's a drive through. We went on a little drive through the island on Sunday. And we see when we reach, I think when we reach by, Saddlers? When we reach Saddlers, you just see a sea of red. Your drive, and it's just everything you see is red, red, red. Saddlers to Newton Grong. And then you see a little sprinkler, a, a orange. Well, May not color it be, but I know it wasn't red. And then I see this thing, a little, a little thing with a message. So I say, what are they saying? So this young girl tell me, a young girl from St. Paul's, she said the message they're saying, try something else. I say, what I mean? Here the young girl, may know what I mean? 
But try something else, they better try give me a break. On election day, the people of constituency number six, they're not making any jokes. They have never made any jokes with their leader. They have never disappointed their leader. They have never disappointed labor. And on election day, the choice will be clear in constituency number six. Number six massive. Number six has given us leader after leader. And for 2020, we have one of the best leaders coming forward. I want you to help me welcome, welcome the man himself. He look good yeah. he look young here. Yeah. Dr. Denzel Douglas, the man for number six. You simply the best. Better than all the rest. Better than anyone. Anyone I love. You simply. I believe that um, Tina Turner made that for me, specifically. <laughs> she deserves tremendous applause. <laughs> my dear comrades, my fellow citizens, the hour has been well spent. I want to thank our chair, Diana, for inviting me to make a presentation tonight. I want to thank those who have gone before me. Again, we had an opportunity to present to you the Next Gen SKN team, the future cabinet of the St. Kitts Nevis government after the fifth day of June, 2020. Tonight, I intended to give a full final statement to the citizens of our country and to the electorate before you would have gone out on Friday to vote. Because of the hour, I shall not do that again tonight. But I invite you to again follow us in the virtual public meeting, our final meeting, before the election, tomorrow night, right back here in our virtual space at Galaxy Club, where we have been with you over the last few days as we wound down this election campaign. I would want to speak to you from my heart. I would want to speak to you almost as if I am the senior statesman of our country. Having had the opportunity for 20 years to lead this proud nation with its progressive people. I wanted to speak to you as to the experiences that I have gathered since I have been in opposition for the last five years. I wanted to speak to you about how much this team, this members, this, this team of members would have been prepared, would have prepared themselves in order to bring national service to the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. And finally, 
I would have liked to speak to you in your own, in your own in individualities, I would say, in your own categories of criticians and divisions to our policemen, our soldiers, our teachers, those who are delivering services, public services on a daily basis, but also those who are waiting to be given guidance, our youths, those who we want to inspire, those from whom we want to bring the very best, and of course, speak as well to those who have migrated and have become part of the general populace of St. Kitts and Nevis. I shall not do that tonight again, but I shall speak to you from my heart tomorrow, our final meeting. God bless you, thank you, and good night. Stand up, next gen, boom, all right then. Stronger than ever, I'll keep becoming stronger.